Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to the Stratus Grid YouTube channel. I'm a solutions architect at Stratus Grid and the topic that I wanted to talk with you about today is how you can use the Rust SDK for Amazon Web Services in order to interact with various service management APIs for the vast array of services available in the AWS platform. Now, the reason that you want to use Rust is because Rust is a very high performance language. You really get a lot of performance out of Rust applications and they use very minimal system resources, things like CPU and memory resources. So if you are managing a very large AWS account with lots and lots of different resources, then using the Rust SDK for AWS might be a good choice for you. Now, one thing you'll want to keep in mind is that the Rust SDK is currently a preview release, so it's not quite production ready. But nonetheless, we are going to leverage this SDK in its current form. Hopefully, the APIs won't change too much before a production release happens. And we're going to take a look at how to interact with one service in particular, which is Amazon S3 Object Storage. Now, we're going to need a few tools on our local development system in order to work with the remote APIs. You should be able to follow along on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. I just happen to have a Windows 11 system here in front of me for the time being, but these tools should work on any of the major platforms out there. So first, we're going to need the SDK for Rust, but in order to do that, we're first going to need to install what's known as Docker Desktop. Now, Docker Desktop is an excellent tool that helps you to get a Docker container environment set up on your local system so that you can create development containers for languages like Rust or Golang or Python or PowerShell and many other programming languages out there. So make sure you get Docker Desktop installed on your system. And then what's really convenient is that there's actually a Rust container image with Rust pre-installed inside of it. And that container image is isolated from your host system, which means that any development work that you do is going to be isolated inside of that container. And any dependencies that you install aren't going to potentially conflict with other dependencies on your local development system. So I strongly encourage developers to leverage containerization for local and remote development and even production deployment. So the other tool that we're going to need here is going to be Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a cross-platform tool here that you can download for Windows or Linux or Mac OS. And I personally love Visual Studio Code because it's a very easy to use, extensible editor, and it's very highly customizable. You can apply custom color themes, custom fonts. The whole user interface scales very nicely and maturely. So I definitely love using Visual Studio Code to write all sorts of different code with different languages, including Rust itself. Now, once you've got Visual Studio Code installed on your local dev system, you'll want to go ahead and fire it up. And then we're going to need a few extensions. So what you can do is head over to the extensions marketplace, which is this little package icon right here. And we want to make sure that we install the dev containers extension right here, because this is what's going to allow us to connect to a container that's running on our local development system, thanks to Docker Desktop. So make sure you've got that extension installed in Visual Studio Code so that we can connect the VS Code editor that's running in the host operating system into that isolated container environment for development purposes. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is actually to fire up a Rust container. So what you'll want to do for that is to spin up a new shell environment here. And we're just going to use the Docker CLI command right here and say Docker run dash dash interactive dash dash TTY. And then we're just going to use that Rust container image from the Docker hub. If this is your first time using Docker or first time using the Rust container image for Docker, then you'll see the container image download onto your local system before the container actually launches into an interactive shell. Now, we can actually detach from this container and just kind of leave it running in the background while we work on it from Visual Studio Code. So if you do Control-P 
control Q, that'll detach your shell from that container. But if we run Docker PS, you can see that that container is still running in the background and we can now connect to it from Visual Studio Code. So let's head back over to VS Code right here. And we're gonna use this dev containers extension to actually connect to that container. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is hit F1 or you can do control shift P and that'll open up the command palette. And then we want to do a search for dev containers attached to running container. Once you have the dev containers extension installed, this feature will become available or this command will become available and we can simply attach Visual Studio Code to that running Rust container. And it's going to install a server component into that container so that VS Code Code, the client can communicate with that server process running in the container. But once that happens, you'll now have an interactive shell directly inside of that Rust container. And so we don't have to worry about installing Rust on our local development system because it's already present here inside of this container. So let's go ahead and do Rust C and do dash dash version. And we can see that we've got the latest version of Rust installed here. We can also use the cargo CLI tool in order to create new projects, add dependencies to projects and things of that nature, right? So let's go ahead and actually install one other extension. Now that we're connected to the container, we wanna go back into the extension marketplace. And now what we can actually do is install certain extensions into the containerized environment. So if you just do a search for the Rust Analyzer extension here. This provides a bunch of language features for Rust developers. So you get things like auto completion in your editor, you get syntax highlighting, and a whole bunch of other features that makes it really easy for you to write Rust code, such as linting even. So we're going to go ahead and say install inside of the container environment, and that'll make sure that we can use Rust Analyzer inside that container. All right. With that extension installed, I think our setup is complete here. So let's go ahead and actually create our new Rust project. So down here in our terminal, which you can access with the control tilde keyboard shortcut on your keyboard, you can just hit control tilde to toggle that shell right there. And we're just going to say cargo new and then specify some kind of project name like AWS sample, right? So now that we have our sample project right here, we can go ahead and open that up in the file explorer. And this is going to reload your window. So once you choose to open a directory and open up this AWS sample directory, the window will just reload and then reconnect back to that container. But this time you're going to see that we actually have the project open in the file explorer. So now that we've got our project created here, it's time for us to go ahead and add in the AWS SDK for Rust. So to do that, we're going to head out to the registry that contains a bunch of third party libraries like the AWS SDK and many community modules, also known as crates in the Rust ecosystem. So if we head out to the website crates.io, this website contains kind of this central package registry where we can find various packages and install them in our project using the Cargo CLI tool. Now there's one package that we're going to need centrally here, which is called AWS-config. And this does have some ambiguous terminology because there's actually an AWS service called AWS-config. But this particular AWS-config package or crate is actually the kind of shared crate that's going to be used to load credentials regardless of which AWS service it is that you're actually trying to work with. So we're going to go ahead and install this AWS config crate into our project here. So once again, we'll hit control tilde to open up our shell and say cargo add AWS config. So now that we've got that, we also need to add a couple of other packages. Since we're going to be working with the S3 service, we need to make sure that we install the AWS SDK specifically for S3 and all of the service crates are going to have prefixes of AWS-SDK dash and then whatever the service name is. So in this case, we're going to load this crate in for S3. So we'll say cargo add on that. And then one other thing that you want to be aware of is that when you are using the Rust SDK, and this is actually covered pretty well in the documentation, which you can access from the Rust SDK 
SDK landing page right here. Something else is that you're going to need to create an async main function using the Tokyo async executor. So all you really need to know for the time being, you don't have to deep dive into Tokyo, just say cargo add Tokyo dash dash features equals full. That'll load the Tokyo crate into our project and add it to our cargo.toml dependencies section right here, along with these AWS crates. And then what we need to do is go into our source file here and change our main function to be asynchronous. And then we're going to add the Tokyo main attribute to that async main function. And now we have an async project. The reason that we have to go through that extra step is because the AWS SDK is using asynchronous operations under the hood. And so we need to make sure that our application entry point is also asynchronous and that Tokyo can be used to kick off the async program. By default, Rust doesn't include an async executor. So that's why we have to load Tokyo as a separate component. All right, so now it's time for us to write some simple code to interact with the Amazon S3 service. We'll generate some credentials to interact with the AWS APIs as well and make sure that we have access to the S3 service. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually grab some example code back over in the documentation for the Rust SDK. If you go to code examples and then actions and scenarios right here, you can actually filter by the service that you're trying to interact with. So in this case, we're working with Amazon S3, and then we can look for a specific action that we want to perform. And the Rust documentation will give us some sample code for how to perform that operation. Let's say that, for example, we just want to create a bucket. That's one of the most fundamental actions that you can perform in the Amazon S3 service, right? So if we take a look at this example right down here, there's just a few lines of code that we actually need to copy into our application. First of all, we have to create something known as a bucket constraint, a location constraint, and that will basically specify which region we're going to create the bucket inside of. This is just an implementation detail for S3 and not every service requires this location constraint. So just be aware of that. We're also going to have to import a couple of types in here so they don't have the use statements in this code sample, but we will have to add in a couple of use statements to make sure that we can reference these various data types that are provided by the SDK. We also need to make sure that we create a client object for S3. So we'll take a look at how to do that in just a moment. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, though, is to actually load our credentials from environment variables. And we'll set up those environment variables in just a few moments here. But for the time being, we want to go into the AWS config crate right here. And there's a function that's exported at the root of that crate called the load from ENV function. And so what this is going to do is it's going to look for certain special environment variable names, and it will grab the AWS credentials from those environment variables. So we'll just go ahead and call that function and then do dot await and assign the result to some variable like a variable called config in this case. The next thing that we need to do is go into the S3 SDK specifically and create a client object that uses this config object for authentication purposes. So we'll go into the AWS SDK for S3, and then we'll go ahead and create a client object here. And we're going to go ahead and pass in a reference to the configuration object that we just created. And then we'll assign this newly created client to a variable like S3 client. And so now for the S3 client variable here, we can call all of these different operations for S3, like create bucket, delete bucket, delete object out of a bucket. We can call put object. We can list objects out of a bucket and all that fun kind of stuff, right? So let's go ahead and now that we have an S3 client created, let's go ahead and copy this example right here. That's going to create the location constraint and then invoke the create bucket operation using that location constraint as its create bucket configuration input. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there, but you'll notice that we get a few error messages right away from the linter. So first of all, we need to specify our region right here. So this would be something like US West 2, or you can choose any other region that you'd like to. And then we also need to locate where these types are imported from. So as you can see right down here, the error mess message actually shows us which module exports that type. So we can just prefix it with that. 
Same thing for this one down here. That's in the AWS SDK S3 crate under the types child module. And then that data structure is called create bucket configuration. So we'll go ahead and paste in that prefix as well. And then you can see this variable client right here. We actually named it S3 client up here. So we're just going to change this variable name to S3 underscore client. And now we can call the create bucket operation. So I'm going to put a semicolon at the end there because we don't want to return the result back to the function output for main. And then the only other thing we need to change here is the actual bucket name that we're trying to create. So I'll create a bucket called Stratus Grid dash Saturn. And hopefully that name hasn't already been taken by any other users. All right, so let's go ahead and actually try to run this code. And we need to actually generate some credentials in order to do that, right? So when we call this load from env function right up here, we need to make sure that we have the environment variables set. So to do that, we're going to head over to the AWS Management Console. We're going to go down to the IAM service right here, and we're going to create a new IAM user with some static credentials. At the moment, there are certain authentication mechanisms like AWS Single Sign-On that are not supported by Rust. So one mechanism that does work is to create static user credentials. So let's do Rust-S3 example. We'll go ahead and hit the next button right down here. We'll attach some permissions policies to interact with the S3 service. So I'm just going to choose the built-in Amazon managed Amazon S3 full access policy here and hit next. And then we'll go ahead and create that user. Then we'll click on view user and go to the security credentials tab for that user. And now we'll cre create a new access key for that user so that we can run local code. We'll check this box here to confirm and we'll go ahead and just give it a description like s3 example dash rust and say create access key so now we can copy the access key id and bring it back into our shell here and we'll say export aws underscore access underscore key underscore id and then we'll paste in that value then we'll say export aws secret access key separated by underscores and we'll copy that secret key value and then finally we'll specify the region with aws underscore region that's a special environment variable that the aws sdks all look for regardless of which language you're using so now we've configured our environment and we can go ahead and try to run this application so from the root of our project directory aws sample we'll just do a cargo run operation that'll go ahead and compile our program using all of the Rust dependencies or crates that we've imported into our application. And then it will run the application after it has been compiled. So all of this is running inside of the containerized environment so that, again, we don't have to install Rust on our actual host operating system. And we don't have to install any of those dependencies or crates into our local system as well. All of those are isolated into the file system of the container. All right, so once this application runs, hopefully we don't receive any error messages. There are going to be a couple of warnings here just because we're not capturing the result from this operation. And it does return either an error or a success object indicating that the operation was successful. But what I'm going to do is actually just go over to the console here and go to the S3 service to validate that the bucket that I wanted to create did actually get created. So if we come to the S3 console right here, and then just do a filter operation here for something unique like grid. You can sure enough see that there is a new bucket inside of our AWS account called Stratus Grid Saturn. So that's kind of the simple process that you can go through yourself in order to set up your development tools on your dev system here using a containerized dev environment. You can get the Rust Analyzer extension, which gives us all that rich, nice IntelliSense functionality that helps us to write code more efficiently and faster. And then finally, we can just run our application inside of that containerized environment and keep our dependencies and the Rust runtime and tool chain all separate from our host system. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it's helped you learn some new skills with Rust and AWS. Again, I'm Trevor, Solution, Trevor Sullivan, a solutions architect with Stratus Grid, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.